What's going on fishing family? Today we're going over 10 reasons why anglers might not be catching any fish. Coming up. What's going on everyone? It's your boy Juno Ryan coming at you with another episode of Tackle Techniques. Today's video is going to be mainly geared towards inexperienced anglers or guys just getting into the sport, trying to figure it all out and make sense of this wild sport that we call fishing. If you're an absolutely experienced angler, this video might not be for you, but I encourage everyone to stick around because you just might learn something. Let's get into it. Reason number one why an angler is not catching anything sounds hilarious, but it's because they might be in the wrong spot. There's plenty of ponds and lakes out there that actually fish don't even, there's nothing in there. It's just literally a body of water that some tadpoles and frogs have a good time in. So you may be casting a lure or a piece of bait out there expecting to catch something and there's nothing in there. It's entirely a possibility. If you're fishing in salt water, there's a giant ocean out there. There's tons of water. The spot you're fishing, need, there needs to be a reason for fish to be there. They're not just going to be there because there's water. There needs to be some type of food, some type of habitat, some reason for the fish to live there. A reason, maybe they migrate through the area. Good place to start, your local tackle shop. Ask for some popular spots to look around, places that people consistently like to go and catch fish. Reason number two why an angler might not be catching anything is they're using the wrong bait or lure for the area or the fish that they're targeting. What you want to do when you're approaching any new fishing situation is you're trying to match the hatch. What that means is you're trying to emulate some sort of naturally occurring bait or forage for whatever fish it is. So if there's a lot of live bait in the area, the lure you're using, you want it to look similar to the live bait in the area. If it's an area, let's say like a cleaning table or a dock where a lot of people throw chunks of bait in, cut up dead bait all the time, you want to be able to match something that would naturally occur there. You may not always catch something on just a hunk of hot dog thrown on the bottom. Now, catfish anglers out there would probably beg to disagree, but almost every fishing application, it would do you well to go out and do a little bit of research on whatever fish it is that's in the area and what they typically feed on, trying to emulate that. Number three is the bait, the lure, whatever it is, the rig is completely jacked up. I think a lot of us more experienced guys have seen the hilarity of having a crank some new angler having a crankbait which with it like 10 split shots right above the bill. Certain lures need certain rigging techniques. Certain baits need certain rigging techniques. You wouldn't want to match a hook that's the size of your hand to a piece of bait that's the size of your fingernail. Matching your hook to your bait is also extremely important. Really, what you want to do is have the right rig for the right application. So doing a little bit of research on whatever lure that is you just bought off the shelf or whatever piece of bait that you just bought from your local tackle shop is, how do you properly rig it in order to catch your targeted species? Number four is the anglers using the wrong presentation. Let's say you're fishing in a stream. You wanna be casting upstream so your bait or lure naturally flows with the current, just looks like any other bait fish normal bait wouldn't be moving against the current. It doesn't look natural. It's not the right presentation. In certain instances, bait may need to be going from shallow to deep or deep to shallow, and it's all really spot and fish dependent. But being conscious of those things and maybe just switching it up a little bit may entice a bite for that new angler. Number five is the water doesn't necessarily match the presentation that you're using. This could come down to water color, water roughness, or just overall movement of the water. So let's dive into color just as a quick insight. Clear water, you typically want to have a lighter colored bait. It looks more natural. Bait fish and other fish will kind of change their color based on their environment. So throwing out something black in crystal clear water probably isn't the best application. I would normally want to use a more translucent looking lure or something in the white variety just because it looks natural and emulates what a bait fish would be doing in that habitat. Number six, the angler might be using the wrong technique. Let's say we're offshore and it's in the middle of the day and we're trying to catch a wahoo. We really need to be covering a whole lot of ground. So the best technique might not be throwing out a hand line. It's probably trolling with some heavy gear and covering a whole lot of water and getting it deep down. 
right technique in order to catch some fish. Number seven, the angler might not be fishing in the zone that fish are in. Let's say you're targeting pompano off the beach. You want to be throwing in between two sandbars. You may be on a super hot beach where dudes are catching pompano left and right of you and you're not catching anything. And the reason is you're throwing your baits right on top of the sandbar as opposed to in the trough where all the pompano are. Let's say you're fishing in a stream where guys typically catch rainbow trout and the trout like to feed behind fast moving current behind a rock. If you're fishing in that fast moving current the whole time and not fishing the eddies, you're probably not going to catch anything. So you may be in the right area, but you need to fish in the right zone where the fish are. Number eight is it may be the complete wrong conditions for whatever it is you're targeting or the technique you're using. I can't tell you how many times I'd be fishing on the pier in the middle of December and I'd have gentlemen walk out and talk to me and ask why no one's catching any snook. And those dudes, the last time they had walked out on the pier was the middle of summer in the middle of the snook spawn. In the winter time, all of the snook aren't hanging out at the pier. So it's really a great example of conditions-based fishing. That can be broken down into a whole bunch of different categories, time of year, wind speeds, tides, water temps. There's a whole lot of information and it can be overwhelming to a new angler, but they're just all things to think about if you're really trying to analyze a situation and learn the most about how fish are feeding, why they're feeding, what is going on. Number nine, you might be using the wrong leader. Let's say you're targeting a fish like a snook that is extremely visual when they're feeding and you're trying to use 300 pound cable as leader. That 300 pound cable is gonna be obviously very visible to the snook. It's also gonna affect the way your bait moves and it's really gonna lead you to not getting any bites. You may wanna downsize into something that's very clear like fluorocarbon in a lighter range, like 40 or 50 pound test. Let's say you keep getting bites, but you're broke off immediately and it looks like a clean cut. You may want to switch from whatever light monofilament leader you were using to some single strand wire because there's barracudas just cutting you off every single time. The right leader for the right application in order to land that fish. Number 10, the angler might be using the wrong line. Between monofilament, braided line, fluorocarbon, even wire line, there's different lines for different applications. If I'm using 50 pound monofilament as my main line and trying to cast a little lure, it's gonna affect the presentation of that lure. I'd probably be better off with using a light monofilament and or a bra light braided line in order to give the best presentation for that lure. Right line, right application. So there you have it. That is 10 reasons why an angler might not be catching any fish. Y'all, if you're a beginner, I really hope you learned something. I know it's a lot of information to take in and I really just only hit the wave tops. I could talk about all of these topics for an hour at a time easily, but it should give you a little bit of insight and give you some ideas going forward on how to put yourself in a better position to catch more fish. Y'all, if you like this style of video, please be sure to leave it a thumbs up. Leave a comment in the section below. Tell me what you liked or you didn't like or what you would like to see in the future. I'll be seeing you guys in that next video. Later.